Hey animators, Sharp here, and today I'll be your tutorial guy. Okay then, I guess I'll never know what I am. Anyhow, in the last episode of On The Go, I started talking about depth modeling, and I've made a simple model of a sphere, which in my case was a snowball. Within only 5 minutes, I got some pretty sick results. For 5 minutes, that is. At the end, I asked if you want me to explain this deeper. The majority has voted, so here I am today, let's talk about depth modeling. Quick word before we start, if you like this kind of content, click the bell, because as a student, I never know when I'm gonna have time to post videos. So I don't have a fixed schedule, you might wanna be notified of the videos as they come out. Today we're going to be modeling the top of my spear from the Oblivion Weapons Pack. A lot of you guys like this shape, including myself, and in this video we're gonna break it down. I've made this tutorial once before, but I was way too tired and the video was kind of bleh. So now I'm redoing it. It's get lost. So to break it down, let's make everything invisible but the blade. All you have is 2D items. How does one create something like this? Also, how does the texture match? You see the line here? If we open it up, you can clearly see that each item is one segment of the blade. And that is exactly the concept of depth modeling. I might have mentioned that it looks something like a 3D printer, adding layers upon layers upon layers. We're going to do that today. First of all, we gotta start with an item sheet. Now there's a whole bunch of presets and if you want to know how item sheets work and which type of item sheet to choose and resize and stuff, I recommend you click the eye in the corner because I explained it pretty well in the beginning of that video. I'll be using 23 by 23, 8 by 8. I will give you the download link for all my item sheet presets in the comment section as well, don't worry, I got you covered, man. I want to open that up with any kind of Im image editing program that supports layers and transparency. In my case, that is going to be paint.net. I will link paint.net in the description as well in case any guys need it. It's free and it's really cool. Again, not my sponsor. I do not have sponsors. So I want to make a new layer to keep things clean and the best way to start would be to draw the item what it would look like from the side. I'll explain everything later, just trust me. Okay, this looks pretty interesting. Let's color it, position it directly in the squares so don't go past beyond any limits or anything. You can make some small tweaks as you go. That'll do. Now before I explain exactly how layering works, let's give it some texture as well and I'll show how to do that as well. Select the magic wand tool and click the item. If you want to paint, you'll only be able to paint on that selection. Now I want to grab some gray color and paint this whole thing gray. Watch this, that's a cool tip. Go to the brush tool, select black, and if you paint anything by default it's gonna look like this. Make sure this icon up here is portraying circles because that's gonna give you soft edges. If you turn this off, you're gonna get hard edges. Decrease the hardness and pick a bigger brush. So now we're gonna get really smooth edges. But you don't want the color to be so intense, so just go to your opacity tab and lower that down to like 12 or something. And now you can paint all over it you want and it's going to look almost natural. Just click randomly. Like I want this part to be darker, I want this part here to be darker. Once you think it's too dark, simply bring this up to white, keeping the opacity low, and you can go the opposite direction. Let's say that'll do, I don't want to complicate too much because I'm supposed to show you how to make depth modeling, not this stuff. And let's just draw some weird random line here just so I show you the texturing still works with this. Now, if you're gonna take a look at your weapon from the side, this is how it's gonna look like. How do I get that into a 3D layer then? Well, you're gonna need some imagination, but in my case I already have the weapon here so we can take reference from that to explain it better. This is the item I drew from the side. And you know the middle of the item is going to be the thinnest. You also know this circle here, you can't see my mouse for some reason, here is going to be the one which is on the very edge, mostly extruded. I don't know how to explain with words, but let me draw you something. You know this segment here, the one that I've selected, is going to be in the very center, going to be the thinnest. This part here is probably going to be the most extruded. Basically, all you have to do is draw some in-between shapes between these two and have all of them be their own item. I'm selecting all the outer pixels because that is going to be my thinnest point of the blade. What I'm doing basically is selecting the middle of the weapon. This is going to be one of the items which is going to be super thin. If you don't know what I'm doing yet, you'll see the bigger picture at the end. This is going to be my most thinner part of the weapon. What I can do now is click this icon to invert selection. So anything I select is going to invert that selection. I want to select the entire square of the item like this. So now I've selected everything except what I've selected before. And if I go to the move tool, I can move the rest around. The reason I selected the entire square though is so I can align it perfectly to the next 
fixed square. So now the item is in the exactly the same place, just without that part here. That part stays here. We can draw the next item on here. Click the add button so you can add multiple selections. I forgot to mention that before. And now you can draw your second layer. I'm not gonna be too accurate because it's still just a tutorial. I just wanna show you how the mechanic works. And with that logic, you can model pretty much anything. Invert, select the entire square, move, align, and repeat the process several times. And this is my item sheet done. This is what the items look like, and if you put them on top of each other, you're going to get some interesting results, you'll see in a second. For now, we gotta save this. Make the background layer invisible, so you're only left with your shapes. Go to File, Save As, save it as a PNG. That's very important because the PNG format supports file transparency, and that's exactly what you need. Then it's going to ask you if you wanna flatten the image. Click Flatten, but then press Ctrl plus Z to undo that change, so you get to keep your layers. In case you need to go back and fix something, you still have all your layers here. I'm gonna minimize that and back in my animator All I gotta do is add a new item call it blade one or something now bronze for the image curve item sheet We just made now because I used an 8 on 8 item sheet I'm gonna have to lower the amount of squares So now it fits again if you want to know how item sheets work click the eye in the corner show before and watch the beginning of the video Because I've explained it pretty well in there click. Okay now You're gonna want to select the first item that is the outer edge of your weapon It's also useful if you put this item into a folder called it blade. So this folder now contains all of the other items in here. Add a new item, blade 2, pick the same image, select the second item. Now lock it onto the blade folder and it should already snap into the next place where the item is supposed to be. Repeat the process. After you're done, you should get your initial image, the one you made before. But if we try to do like the same thing we did with the snowball, let's see, let's scale the Z up. You see what happens? This is why I layered the items down. However, if you're going to scale it, it's not hollow. So how did I make the hollow weapon then? Let's start by scaling item number one down. This is going to be very thin. So the thinner it is, the sharper it is. That's what I heard. I don't know if it's true, but that's what I heard. That's why I'm so skinny. Okay, I'll stop. Blade number two, however, instead of scaling it up, should scale it down, move it on the side physically. So now, this is your extrusion. So if I duplicate this and just put the Z to minus 29, it should jump on the other side. So I have two items which are thin positioned on both sides. That is going to make the hollow shell effect that we want. Let's just proceed and make the whole thing. Oh yeah, that's starting to look pretty cool. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. As you see, we have made some pretty cool top of the blade thing. Now you also see, depending on how much you intrude slash extrude this stuff, you can get some variety of shapes. You can see in here, these faces get extruded less and less. This one is barely extruded, so it starts to get thinner and thinner. Like, it's starting to go more horizontal instead of getting extruded. So these ones at the bottom here start to get extruded more and more. So you get more dynamic shapes with this. It's hard to explain, but you can see what I mean here. That is mostly it. If you want to do any small tweaks with this, you can always just scale the entire folder. However, don't do anything like this. Maybe like small adjustments, something like this. And if you take a look from the side, you still see the texture remained untouched because that is how we model it. That is how it stays together. Now, I am curious, what happens if we try to, if we try to put this on the top instead of the other one? Hold on, make it brighter. Guys, who did it better? Who did it better? <laughs> oh my God, what if I like this one more? I'm gonna hate myself so much. Oh my God, no. Did I just fix it? I made an adjustment I didn't even know I needed. And now that's here, I kind of like this version better. Ah. Uh. Well guys, that's it for the day. Oh my god, this is gonna bother me so much. I hope you learned about depth modeling. It's no longer an issue. Since I post way less now, if you want to see what I'm doing, you should follow my Instagram because I occasionally post there. I still have more time for Instagram than YouTube. Also, if you want to try this out and make something amazing, you should definitely let me know on my Discord server. The invite link is also in the description. So join the server, ping me, and show me what you've done because I want to see how creative you guys can get with something like this. Yeah, thanks for watching, see you next time, and stay sharp.